Canon Films. The home of high-powered, high-voltage motion picture entertainment. Hi, I'm Austin Trek, author of the Canon Film Guide. And you're listening to Play That Rock and Roll with Joe K. We're Canon Films, and we're Dynamite. You mentioned the Ninja movies, so let's let's talk about the Ninja Trilogy. I heard you in a different podcast, you said, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Revenge of the Ninja is your favorite of all the films in this book, correct? Yes, okay. yes. That, that is accurate. <laughs> That's that's cool. I did not. I dropped the ball. I didn't get a chance to watch that one, but I did watch Ninja Three: The Domination. Mm-hmm. That's a weird freaking movie. How did <laughs> the Ninja trilogy go from a poorly dubbed Franco, whatever? Frank, Frank Okay, yeah, a poorly dubbed that guy to like an Exorcist movie. His soul possesses the body of an innocent woman and transforms her into a lethal assassin. Who are you? (laughs) Yeah, these are three very... Three very different movies. The only thing connecting their canon's first ninja trilogy is Shokusugi. Right. Um who plays a ninja in all three of them but he's he plays a total he's a different ninja in each one yeah um and so the ninja became a it was a pretty big success for canon when they relate when they released it and it really kick-started the ninja craze in the 80s because ninjas were everywhere by the mid 80s and enter the ninja was the movie that really brought them here put ninjas front and center first in the u.s to western audiences was that really the um, first true ninja pit or or was there it was the first yeah it was the first big one chuck norris had fought ninjas in the octagon before that but they were kind of they they weren't front and center like enter the ninja (laughs) if you take on a ninja no matter how many you are be prepared for the consequences enter the ninja from canon like enter the ninja was just about, I mean, the the opening is just Shokasugi showing off his ninja weapons, and everything about that movie just makes ninjas look awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, and Enter the Ninja, Shokasugi's a bad guy who is trying to kill Franco Nero, who's just trying to protect his buddy's coconut farm. Um, Revenge of the Ninja, Shokasugi got to play the hero in that one, and he, he's... He's a ninja whose family gets massacred by bad ninjas. So he moves to the U.S., starts a business importing uh, very delicate dolls with a with a U.S. business partner who is sneaking them full of heroin. They're full of heroin. Oh, okay, okay. And so um, what he doesn't know is that his best buddy is also an evil ninja. And yes, eventually they, they, they have to fight. Ancient Japanese warfare explodes in America. It's the ultimate martial arts adventure. No one can survive the revenge of the ninja. Revenge of the Ninja, a Golan Globus production from the Canon Group. Uh, ninja 3 is Shokasugi is. It's the smallest part he's played in any of the three movies, and that's really the big reason why he f- fell out with canon and didn't keep making oh. his next few ninja movies. Um, they made... Menachem had an idea, as Menachem, I gather that he did all the time, but this time, let's have a, a female ninja. Sure. Um, and I'm and that was his idea. An idea from him, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was. He he was ahead of the curve sometimes. Yeah. And so they they based the movie around this character that uh, Lucinda Dickey played. Yep. And one of the reasons why you have the exorcist stuff is Shokasugi was already mad that he wasn't going to be the star, especially after he was the star of the last one. He had this sort of building career yeah. at that point. He didn't want to play this minor character. He also didn't believe that a, a woman could be a ninja. 
So to appease him, she wasn't a ninja. She was possessed by the evil spirit of a ninja, a, ma a, a evil spirit of a male ninja. So then, then Shokusugi was able to accept it. He's like, oh, okay, this makes sense now. I can believe that. Demonic possession, yes, but a lady knowing martial arts, no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where Revenge of the Ninja left off, Ninja 3 begins. An epic struggle of superhuman strength and supernatural forces. Ninja 3, The Domination. But it does make for a real entertaining watch. And I'm guessing is, and I, because I didn't see it, is Revenge of the Ninja more straightforward ninja action and less this goofy shit in Ninja 3? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The reason I reason I, I say it's my favorite, beyond just it's a movie that I have very vivid memories of, my video store shelf, renting oh, it often yeah. and pulling it out, and it had the big box, and they, they, they came in the bigger boxes back then, um, just to make them stand out on the shelves. But it's the perfect balance of actually being a really good action movie. There's some awesome stunts in there. A few stunts that almost got stuntmen killed, injured in terrible ways, but they come out, they look great, of course. Yeah. There, there's no wires, there's no, <laughs> these are actually people doing these things. Um, so the action is great, and the martial arts are very well choreographed. And then there's so much of the goofy stuff. Like the movie, I think Sam Furstenberg, he, he knew it was going to be silly, and he wasn't afraid to afraid for it to be a little goofy. So you have these, one of the, one of, in one scene in the movie, uh, Shokusugi's son gets kidnapped. And so he, the, the kid is like, he gets a fight scene. He gets several fight scenes. And it's Shokusugi's actual son, um, Ken Kusugi, yep. who is like six years old at that point, And he gets a whole fight. The grandma, the grandma character who works in the dojo, she, like when they come to kidnap the son, she's there and she gets a fight scene and they replace her with a stuntman. But it's clearly like this little lady in the cuts oh, and she's no. walking around and like hunched over and then and she's doing like flips and kicks. And there's a you scene know what, if where... We bought it for Bronson and Kinjite, I think I'd <laughs> buy it <laughs> in that one. Yeah, there, there, there's a great scene where the bad guys there's this big fight on a, on a kid's playground. So you get like kid, like bad guys getting kicked down slides and into okay. like climbing nets and things like that. But the bad guys are dressed like the village people. Oh man, I, yeah, I remember you mentioning that. Like what the hell? <laughs> yeah, well it was just something that the costume person on set thought, would, thought it would be a, funny, a fun idea. Mm -hmm. Suggested it to Sam Furstenberg and he's just like, yeah, that sounds fun, let's do it. <laughs> right. That, that really does sound like a lot of fun, and uh, I, I'm glad I saw Ninja 3 as well, if only because of how ridiculous it is. Um, do you, what do you think of the Ninja? Pretty good, or is it just sort of, uh, you know, something that get, got it started? Does it live up to the other yeah, two? I heard the Ninja is great as well. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll recommend all three oh, good. Okay. of the Ninja trilogy, yeah. um, of the, that first one, just because... Franco Nero and being, yeah, with his dubbed Texan accent right. and you get some great Shokasugi stuff. Christopher George plays a bad guy in there and next to John P. Ryan, like he oh, is nice. one of the like hammiest villains in any canon movie. Sold. <laughs> Uh, best of you made me feel like a rock star right there. That was yeah. great. Hell yeah, man. Yeah.